This is the most confusing way to do matrix multiplication ever, while this is the simplest way possible that you can do after watching this video. Let's multiply some small matrices together. The usual approach is to highlight the first row and the first column and do a little bit of pointwise multiplication followed by adding up some terms. This is followed up by focusing on the second row and doing a similar calculation for the second entry. Computing the sums gives us the final answer. But this is such an unintuitive process. Surely matrix multiplication should not be this difficult, right? In the original problem, we can interpret the first two columns of the matrix as cooking ingredients. To cook a dish, we need to combine the ingredients with a recipe. Matrix multiplication can then be thought of as cooking. For example, the first ingredient is the vector 1, 2. The recipe tells us that we are going to use 5 units of this ingredient. This is followed by considering the second ingredient, which is the vector 3, 4. How many units of this ingredient are we using? Well, the recipe tells us that we are going to use 6 units of this ingredient. This reduces the calculation to simple vector addition. In fact, we can just multiply the 5 into each entry to get the vector 5, 10. Likewise, with the second ingredient, we can just multiply the 6 into both entries to get 6 times 3 followed by 6 times 4. Finally, adding vectors is a relatively simple task as well. We will just add coordinate-wise to get the vector 23, 34. This can be thought of as our cooking dish that we cooked up using the ingredients and the recipe. But what happens if we have multiple recipes on the right? We can think of this as cooking three separate dishes. The first recipe would correspond to the first dish. The second recipe would correspond to a second dish. And the third recipe would correspond to a third dish. This means that the final answer must have three columns. Let's first try to cook up the first dish by combining the ingredients 1, 2 and 3, 4 with the recipe 5, 6. We actually saw this just now, but we can repeat the calculation to remember what the process entails. The result is going to be a combination of these ingredients. For the first ingredient, we're going to use 5 units, and for the second ingredient, we're going to use 6 units. Multiplying the 5 coordinate wise will give us the vector 510, and multiplying 6 into the vector coordinate wise would give us 1824. Adding the vectors component wise will give us 2334. Since this is the first dish, the first column in our final answer would be 2334. But the second recipe is going to help us cook up a second dish. This time, how many units of the ingredient 1, 2 are we using? Now instead of 5 units, we're now going to use 7 units. And instead of 6 units of the ingredient 3, 4, we're going to use 8 units of the ingredient 3, 4. Multiplying the 7 coordinate wise gives us a different vector, 7, 14. And multiplying by 8 coordinate wise would give us the vector, 24, 32. Finally, adding the two vectors coordinate wise would give us the dish, 31, 46. This is our second dish that we just cooked up. The final recipe, 9, 10, would help us cook up the final dish. This time, for the ingredient 1, 2, we're going to use 9 units. And for the ingredient 3, 4, we're going to use 10 units. Let's apply coordinate-wise multiplication on both vectors. And apply coordinate-wise addition to those vectors. The vector 39, 58 is our final dish. And this is the much cleaner and even more intuitive approach to matrix multiplication. To see why this works, 
check out the document in the description box below. What would happen if we used the zero recipe? Intuitively, it should give us nothing. For the first ingredient, we're going to use zero units. For the second ingredient, we're going to use zero units. And for the third ingredient, we're going to use zero units. Applying coordinate-wise multiplication gives us the zero vector for each constituent. And adding a bunch of zero vectors will simply give us the zero vector. Using the zero recipe basically gives us a zero dish. We can think of this as almost like a black hole recipe. It sort of sucks everything into the zero dish. Are there any other black hole recipes? With a little bit of luck, you might notice that the recipe 1, negative 2, 1 also gives us the zero dish. We can therefore treat this recipe as a black hole recipe. You might also notice that the recipe 2, negative 4, 2 also gives us the zero dish. Can we use these black hole recipes to create new black hole recipes? What if we took the recipe 1 half of 1, negative 2, 1? It turns out that matrix multiplication is such a special property that we can bring out the 1 half and what remains is the usual matrix multiplication. But the vector 1, negative 2, 1 is a black hole recipe which means that when combined with the ingredients, this would give us the zero vector. This makes one half of a black hole recipe a black hole recipe as well. The black hole sort of sucks in multiples of its own recipes. And is the sum of two black hole recipes a black hole recipe as well? Once again, matrix multiplication has really neat properties which allows us to split up the sum. And since each of the ingredients 1, negative 2, 1 and 2, negative 4, 2 are black hole recipes, when combined with the ingredients, these give us the zero vector. Adding two zero vectors give us another zero vector. This means that the sum of two black hole recipes is indeed a black hole recipe itself. And the more formal and technical name for this is known as the null space of the matrix. This has many applications both in and out of math, such as transport modeling via simultaneous equations, computing best fit lines via least square solutions, and population growth via eigenvectors and eigenvalues in linear algebra. But given a bunch of ingredients and a recipe C1, C2, and C3, what are the dishes that we can form? Well, when we combine the recipes with the ingredients, we are going to use C1 units of 1, 2, C2 units of 3, 4, and C3 units of 5, 6. This is called a linear combination of the vectors, and it belongs to the span of these ingredients. However, we can reinterpret this combination as a matrix multiplication using our ingredients recipes analogy. The left side basically tells us all the different possible dishes that we can create. This is known as the range of the matrix. But since the expressions on the left and the right are equal to each other, the range of the matrix is precisely the span of the columns of the matrix. We call this right hand side the column space of the matrix. These ideas can be applied to analyze social networks via incidence matrices, solving problems involving search engines via orthogonality, and can be used for approximations by abstracting these ideas. But I guess we should answer the very first question that we posed in this video. We would interpret the columns of the matrix as ingredients and the yellow vector is our recipe. For the first ingredient, we would use one unit. For the second ingredient, we would use two units. For the third ingredient, we would use three units. 
and for the fourth ingredient, we would use four units. Let's apply coordinate wise multiplication for each of these terms. Followed by coordinate wise addition. The sum of the first entries in each of the four items is 90. The sum of the second row is 100. The sum of the third row is 110. And the sum of the fourth row is 120. This is the final, much more intuitive answer to matrix multiplication. But there's more to linear algebra than just matrix multiplication. If you want a nutshell of linear algebra, click on the video here.